Hello everyone, this is a Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. Uh, today we're on the February 14th of 2023. And today we have a Mark Waite with us, Kevin Martins, Sayantan Mondal, uh, sorry if I'm butchering your name, and myself, um, Bruno Verashten. So today in the agenda, we have some open action items, of course. We also have some ongoing work and discussion. We'll talk a lot about CentOS 7, I'm afraid. And then a little a slot about um, S390X. So let's start with the open action items. Uh, we still have, I think we'll have that for several meetings, uh, to revisit the platform support containers. As far as I know, there has been no progress on this subject. Uh, it's the same uh, status done in the last meeting. So it has been done for the infrastructure yeah. There was still one PR from a user. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Mark. You know, actually, much more I, than I, I propose let's take this one out of the out of the action items list completely. Really, and just call it that yeah. we're going to. We've got more to do, but we'll do it in in as we identify action items because I think I think we've got work to do, but we'll do it in pull requests. Cool. Okay. There we go. And unfortunately, Damien couldn't join today, but he still has to check the Docker image download statistics per platform and version to help us decide if we should or not remove certain images. Um, so it's in the backlog. Has it done been done yet? I'm not so sure, Mark. Uh, if you have right. attended the infra meeting, can you tell us more about that? I, I don't know if he did. Uh, is or it in the backlog but, yet? Uh, I I'm I'm reason well. I I don't know actually. Uh, I don't the importance of this one was brought to the forefront when we reissued a security advisory for the container images earlier this week, or maybe it was last week that we issued a mm -hmm. container advice, a container content security advisory. Command line Git had to be revised, and and that was I think that's the first time that we've issued an advisory for the Jenkins container images. So thanks to the security team, because we update but, them all the time. Yeah, right. Yeah. They are pretty much updated. Well, thanks to you or the other person of the of the group, and thanks to Dependabot also, which is always proposing uh, new changes every week. So more or less, we are up to date. But this time, it was not enough. Right. Correct. And and part of that was the the platform vendors took an a surprisingly long time to issue the change for for the their products. Right. It was it took oh. a, it took longer than than what I would perceive as usual for the Debian project to issue their their change. And Red Hat, likewise, was not as fast as they typically are. OK, oh, but now we are up to date and it's working. I saw new releases, uh, so I guess it went up to the end and we now have um, a version of the Docker images without this uh, vulnerability. Correct. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you, Mark. Uh, no progress, as far as I know, regarding the Blue Ocean container Docker images. No, but I think we've got, I think Damien's got the right idea here. And I put a note a little bit further down that finding a way to communicate to the users, this may be a place where we ought to do a code change to Jenkins core that will Create, present an administrative monitor to the user if a particular flag file is detected on the file system. For instance, oh. then, so today I get a, a message that nicely pops up that says, you've got a new Jenkins version available. 2.391 yep. is available, you're running 390. That's a nice help. Well, why not a similar alert that says, you are running a container image that is no longer actively supported by the Jenkins project. And and then we just tell them, sorry, your your container image is in fact no longer supported. And the tombstone event would be just as suggested here, 10 seconds sleep. In addition to the 10 seconds yep. sleep, we could write that file to that location. And then when the Jenkins controller starts, it reads it and says, ah, you're running a deprecated container. I need to tell you that. 
Okay, so you are reusing an existing mechanism that is already working for the update of the R Jenkins. Well, or and okay. even better, we're not relying on the person who is running that container to read the log files, mm -hmm. yeah. right? The real problem there is most of us, embarrassingly enough, don't read the log files because until there's a problem, I'm not motivated to look in the log files. Whereas these administrative monitors, I see those until I clear them anytime, anytime I start my Jenkins controller. Is that something that could make its way back into the latest LTS if it ever gets accepted it, or not? It could be, it could be backported to LTS, absolutely. We've done that before. That would be nice, yeah. Uh, so I would get the message. I think I have a few controllers where Blue Ocean is still working. So anyhow, cool. Uh, thank you, Mark. We still have to implement that, but whatever. Next topic, I'm afraid it's still for you, Mark. CentOS 7 Jenkins controller Docker image. So. While searching information with this image, Damien a few weeks ago found that Red Hat um, uh, will put the CentOS 7 in maintenance update. It, no, sorry, it's already in maintenance update since 2020 and will be until June 2024. It's kind of complicated, but mostly uh, the discussion we had was that maybe we should just get rid of CentOS 7 because it's not really maintained anymore and it's a pain to get something recent for example for git you know it better than i do uh on these versions of uh, centos yeah um, and i and i am i think this is one i'm going to take as a personal mark wait wants to do this one because well you've you've heard my sort of burning passion against CentOS 7 because of the pain that yes, it creates against, yes so so it, it, it's good when an open source contributor has a passionate thing and they use that for the benefit of the community. So in this case, my passion is, and I think what we need here is a Jenkins enhancement proposal, a JEP that proposes to end CentOS 7 support earlier than we would normally have ended it. Because right now, the, the natural tendency would be CentOS 7 support will end when the operating system vendor ceases support of it, which would be 2024, June 2024. But really, they've already ceased support for the Docker container. So we, we would be justified in saying we're going to stop support of the container image. But that would be different than most other things, right? Because our container image support usually is tied to the operating system support. We've never had a a separate policy for container image support different from operating system support. Because there's that difference, it makes sense that we use a Jenkins enhancement proposal to propose an early end of life for CentOS 7 across the entire Jen uh, uh, Trier Jenkins project. Basil Crow noted that he ended support for CentOS 7 in the systemd installer when he implemented it. Yeah. And so we don't it's not officially supported for systemd. It's not officially supported in the container image upstream. It still works. And, and we're not going to stop it from working. But the sooner we tell people this thing is unsupported, the healthier it will be for, for everyone to realize, hey, this is, this is an unsupported thing. I, now, as I'm talking, I wonder, maybe this is another place I may, may yeah, bring into uh, that an idea for an administrative monitor that says toxic operating system. <laughs> <laughs> toxic. Oh, man. Sorry, okay. sorry. Did, yeah, it's did, the did same my mechanism. Did come out again, of... Bruno? It did, did I'm it? afraid it has, yeah. But I totally can feel your pain. I've been there. I've done that. It was really difficult to get something uh, as mundane as cool uh, right. running for a recent version of call or git running on centos i've been fighting with centos 7 for years and now we've right. got replacement yes so that would use the same mechanism you cited earlier uh, right. which is display something yeah that would be great yeah well toxic and, and by system toxics yeah yeah it, it's it's a way of saying but but the reality is it needs a jenkins enhancement proposal because this is now a broader concept oh. than just let's do one thing right 
we've we've talked in Doc's office hours about transitioning to tell people to use Java 17 to install. And that's easy. That's just telling them to use something different. This is truly declaring end of life for something and it's end of life before we would normally have ended its life. Yeah. Got it. And, and it, um, it, it, it'll all be part have... of that same JEP. So it's not really a, a separate JEP. It's just, it's just that the idea, the concept can be easily captured into the Jenkins enhancement proposal because it will propose a plan for ending support for CentOS 7 already here, 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 and what's the timeline, et cetera. I haven't done the exercise of migrating from CentOS 7 to something more recent, but in the same line. So I don't know how difficult it is, but we have some alternatives for people uh, which will who will have to migrate from CentOS 7. Am I right? UBI oh, 9 is on. Yes. So UBI oh. 8, UBI 9, uh, Alma Linux 8, Alma Linux 9, Rocky Linux 8, Rocky Linux 9, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9, Oracle Linux 8, wow. Oracle Linux 9. We've got lots of alternatives that they can yeah. use. I think I got the message. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, is it easy to migrate to those distributions? Uh, uh, easy is a easy is a relative thing. No, right? okay. The answer the answer is wow, you you enjoyed the fact that for the last eight or 10 years, your, your base operating system was really not undergoing any fundamental changes. Well, it's a fundamental change to switch from, from seven to eight, right? And from seven to nine, yeah. it's a fundamental yeah. change. And, and there will be surprises. There will be things that they have to do. That's, they, they've, been, they've been building up debt and now it is going to be time to pay down the debt. And to pay back. Yeah, right. yeah of course. Exactly. It's and just the way it is. Ton. Yeah, um, there may be tons of tutorials, by the way, which will have people migrating from CentOS 7 to one right. of the distros you just cited. So it's not Jenkins work to do that, but people will find out and they exactly. should be. Okay, hello, Daniel. Well, and, and that transition off CentOS 7, they will have to do it by June of 2024, no matter what, because Red Hat yeah. is ending life for that product in, in June of 2024. The proposal here that I'll write as the JEP is to end Jenkins' support of that thing sooner, because we don't support it with System D, and we don't support the and and the upstream does not support the container images today. But that needs a Jenkins enhancement proposal. Got it. Thanks a lot, Mark. Um, if anybody has something to add regarding that subject, go ahead. No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, last subject, which was on the agenda, was the IBM S390X agent maintenance. And how did it go, uh, Mark? Fine, I guess. I, embarrassingly undetected the absence of the agent. <laughs> it, we never, I never received an alert. Oops. I never received any red flag. It, it's, it was up every time I checked. And so it seems to be just fine. Looks like a success <laughs> yes yeah the ibm did a great job of performing that that maintenance work i don't know how long it was down they estimated they gave themselves a four or six hour window and i suspect it may have been down mm -hmm. for four or six minutes instead of four or six hours well uh they know how to operate that's cool um i'm afraid i'm at the end of the agenda is there any other subject one of you uh, would like to address None from, well, I take it back. So the a reminder that April or May, Debian 12 will release. Uh, oh. So you don't need to make any notes of it. Just a reminder for the rest of us that Debian 12 is releasing sometime here in April or May, probably. And that when it releases, we will change the documentation on Jenkins.io to recommend Java 17. Java 11 continues to be supported, but because they're dropping Java 11 support from Debian 12 will switch the documentation to say use Java 17. Now the containers will continue to deliver Java 11 even on Debian simply because we continue to use Eclipse Tamarin. So it, just be aware that the documentation will change. 
we're beginning the process of getting people's minds around the fact that Java 17 is also supported by Jenkins. Cool. Thank you, Mark. And speaking of Timurin and um, Java 17 and containers, I was thinking of the risk five, sorry, one of my hobbies. <laughs> so um, is there a marker or something that would tell us that, yes, it's time to think of risk five or it's not yet time, it's too early? Because uh, Docker is not available directly from Docker for RISC-V, for example, but you can build it by yourself and you can find a few vendors providing already Docker for RISC-V. We also can find non-official nightly builds of OpenJDK for RISC-V. So I guess we should maybe think of that when Docker is an official release, when OpenJDK is an official release, or is there anything else we should think of? Um, I think we are still building some images for, oh, did we remove for the PPC64 LE? We, we, removed we, them, we right, stopped Mark? building PPC64 when IBM stopped giving us access to a PPC64 machine. And we had, we had ended that support even before they stopped giving us access. We never, we never actively built the PPC64 container images, but, but risk five, as are, it becomes, oh, sorry, go ahead. You know, so as risk five Sorry, becomes, my fault. Uh, as risk five becomes more more mature, I I think eventually we we may want to support it. I I like that we support ARM, right? Our ARM support is well used and well liked. Uh, we even use it actively in the Jenkins project itself. So I don't see any reason yes, not to eventually have... support risk five. Yeah, except that we don't have any ARM32 or ARM64 machines to test, but it doesn't prevent us from building ARM32 and ARM64 machines. Am I right? Actually, I think so. We've been, I think we've been using, I, I regularly use ARM64 machines from Oracle Cloud to do testing that I do. Uh, that's not, me too. not provided by the Jenkins project, but just, just me. And I think there are some ARM64 machines available from ci.jenkins.io as well, but they're not needed to build the mm -hmm. container images. I'll have to go look and no, see. No, not. So I, I was just wondering if we will need to have some, some, somehow, some one of the day, uh, a RISC V machine somewhere in the R Jenkins infra. Or if not, if we're just building Docker images and somebody's willing to test them, is it okay enough? Or do we have to have a real machine somewhere? So we, we haven't had to have a real machine to do S390 support, for instance. So so yeah. I don't think I don't think we're limited by by needing to have physical machines to do it. QEMU seems to be pretty good at doing doing the hardware emulation we need for the platforms we support, System 390, uh, ARM, and AMD64. Okay, so uh, I don't want to go too fast, but uh, good in indicators would maybe be official Docker release for the um, CPU architecture and maybe official um, Tamarin open GDK builds for the target architecture. And then maybe we could think of that. Yeah, then it would, yeah, that would be quite easy then. Yes. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Uh, sorry for bringing that once again <laughs> on the table. <laughs> Anyhow, is there any other subject one of you would like to address? So we've got Vadek and Daniel. Daniel, did you have a question? Oh, Vadek, oh. hello. Uh, yes, or more of a request. So recently we published oh. a security advisory. Can you hear me? Test? We can. Hello? Okay, yes, we can. yeah. Okay, so recently we published a security advisory with the Git vulnerability. And <clears throat> let's just say preparing that I don't think was a lot of fun for Damien or the security team. Given the, let's call it, diversity of images we provide. Um, so this has been a recurring topic for a for a while. Uh, personally, I wasn't a big fan of that, mostly because how long it took to generate all new images when we deliver core security updates. Um, but when we were attempting to understand where Git is installed, which images even exist, what is their maintenance status, that was quite painful. 
the uh, worst one by far is the Windows controller image, I think, which hasn't been updated in almost a year and has Jenkins releases with known vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. So either we do this right and update it at the same pace as everything else, or we just don't bother at all and throw it in the trash. I don't understand the current situation. And I think now I'll stop talking and let Vadek do the politicking very, a lot better than me. Yeah, thank you, Daniel, for the introduction for the Windows controller. If I was alone there without Daniel, I would be more proposing, could we kill everything except one to ensure that we are <laughs> good enough? And that's all, because in terms of security, the more surface we have to cover, the more difficult it is. So, um, yeah, I'm more concerned about the number of things we have there in terms of different variants, in terms of multiplication, architecture, GDK, all these kind of things adding together in terms of complexity. Honestly, before doing the advisory, I thought it was an easy task. What is the current situation for that CV on that image? I was not expecting to have what, what 20 images in total to check and this kind of thing. I was negatively surprised, I will say. At the same time, I understand that we want to add the favorite image of everyone and this kind of thing. My question, as I'm uh, very new in this uh, meeting, I will say, what is the interest to have multiple versions of the different image we have there? In the sense that what you want is to run Jenkins, the internal tool provided by the image or the underlying open uh, operating system does not seem to provide a huge value, at least from my point of view. So could you perhaps uh, teach me a bit the the interest and this kind of thing there. Sure. So you okay, Bruno? You okay if I start talking? Oh yeah, yeah. I was about to ask you. <laughs> okay, Go ahead. Thank so, you, Mark. Okay. So there are, there are. Well, first to support to support the the open question that Daniel asked. Shouldn't we just drop the Windows controller image? The answer is yes, we should. Right. That's that for me is a, a very simple direct answer. Clearly, it is so outdated. And no, there has been no outcry about how outdated it is. There, it makes no sense for us to continue maintaining the Windows controller image. It just does not make sense. So, so that for me seems like yes, that's just a good thing to say. It's that's akin to the same problem we have with the Blue Ocean container. We just need to declare that the container is deprecated. Blue Ocean container was an old container we used years ago in the Jenkins tutorials. We've long since stopped using that, and, and we use the standard container. So it's it's a separately labeled container that just makes no sense to be to be touched. So so first answer back to the Windows controllers: Yes, we just need to drop them. Uh, for the controller, it doesn't make sense, right? It's Docker. We thought might be a viable thing on Windows, and it turns out it's not. It's not a it's a, a pretty good thing for Windows agents. It's not interesting or used by Jenkins consumers to run controllers. If it were, they would have been shouting and outraged at how outdated that container image is. So first question answered. Second question then was, hey, why do we have all these all these container images? Um, Two, two general profiles for users on the controller side. One is the user who says, I want something that looks an awful lot like the server operating system I was using before. That's the Debian containers and the UBI containers. They look an awful lot like a server operating system. And therefore their tools that would have run on a server operating system um, behave like they, they would have expected. Then there's the, I want the narrowest profile possible crowd. And for them, that's the Alpine image. So those two concepts were the reason why, why we have Debian and UBI 9 on the one side and or Debian and UBI on the one side and on the other side, Alpine. 
So what about Debian Slim? Yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. And that was an attempt to give people something smaller in image size, but I don't know that there's I don't know that there's compelling benefit to that to do that. So okay. it's a good question. And, and now do Alma Linux, that was a pull request basically justified by uh yeah, we're not we don't know where Sendos is going. So here's a pull request and someone ended up merging it. And for something that we're expected as the Jenkins project to maintain pretty much indefinitely, um, that's not how I would, uh, I would like to see a better justification for a new image there. Uh, right. Then, you know, there maybe the thing we're currently doing isn't going to be around for more than a year or so. So let's just preemptively create a new thing. That seems kind of weak if I understood the justification correctly. Good point. Absolutely. And and your your point is completely valid. Certainly. Alma, Alma Linux was added in a season when we weren't sure where things were going. And I'm not sure that Alma Linux adds anything over UBI 8 or UBI 9, right? Okay, they're both available for consumers who want to run a container that is based on the core technology that underlies Red Hat and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And it's it's a valid point to say, hey, should we should we end this one? So yeah, let me yeah. let's take yeah. it as an as a as a propose as a topic for discussion here because I think we've got a, a an overarching challenge. We need to have a way to notify users that their container image is no longer supported. And the suggestion we just discussed earlier in the meeting was possibly add an administrative monitor that looks for a flag file and says, "Hey, if we detect this flag file in your container, we're going to tell you with an admin monitor." that your, your container is no longer supported. That kind of um, idea, to, yeah, that yeah. way we can end life on these things and do a, a, a reasonable way of informing people that we're ending life. Go ahead, Daniel, sorry. Thank you, Mark. Uh, no, Daniel, I was just wondering uh, what you and Vadek are thinking about um, the idea of using Wolfie like adding another new version i know yeah. that there will be low in terms of number of additional libraries and so reduction of cve there we had a discussion uh, through sasha at some point with uh, uh, former b um i don't remember his name um uh, one of the gems uh Rollins, Rollins. I think. yeah uh the approach is interesting now, what I'm concerned about is more the fact that we are adding new flavor every time there is a yeah. new trend, we think, and this kind of thing. The approach seems to be interesting, for sure. But if it's not adopted enough, we will support something for, I don't know, 1% of the user, which is not what I would like, in a sense. And that's very related to my next question. Due to the discussion we had with, I think it was Hervé and Damien, I don't know if you were involved, Bruno, as well, during the distribution no. topic. So I ask a stupid question to Damien and Hervé. What are the images that are used nowadays across the different things that we are providing? And my suspicion is that you want to install Jenkins, you are picking the first image that you discover, oh, it's working. OK, I'm taking that one. So please correct me if I'm wrong. Is there more incentive? Like what you mentioned, Mark, before, it seemed to be very interesting. But is it the thing that is covering the majority of the user, or is it just the expert user that exactly know what they want? I'm asking the question in particular because update of Jenkins, it's a very touchy topic. and changing the current image it's even worse in a sense that most of the people does not know what they are working on in terms of jenkins so that's a yeah. bit my hypothesis at the moment yes uh, hypothesis mark has another one regarding people's preference for existing distributions they are already using their day-to-day -day, um, work the thing is there is a subject there is an open action item which is we'd like to have i don't know where it's but we'd like to have the um, 
statistics about the use of the different images uh, so that we know which uh, images are still relevant and which one we could get rid of because almost nobody uses them. For the time being, we don't have the data to uh, say that your point is valid or invalid or my point, whatever. We don't have the data. Uh, am I right, Mark? I right. We I don't have the data. We don't have the data download data, but it is available. Uh, we've just got to have an org admin who extracts it, and Damien's got the permission to extract it, as far as I know. Yeah, I'm especially asking a question because uh, he sent me the data. I do a quick analysis on it, and it was mainly oh. there was a lot of tags, and a lot of them are used, meaning that it was perhaps five to ten percent of everything. It was not. There was one mm. tag with 99% of the usage, but it was more okay. distributed across everything that is available. So that's why I'm asking the question naively. Is it because of random choice or there is a real rationale behind and this kind of thing? I'm not saying I'm, I think I'm true or wrong. I think I'm wrong, but I'm just asking the question to ensure we are all aligned in that. Mm -hmm. I don't have the answer, Mark. Yeah, and, and so I, I I have hypothesis, but I don't have any way to back the the theory that I assume that people choose containers based on their past experience. Otherwise, why would anyone in their right mind choose the CentOS seven container? Because it's it's yeah, a, you're a right. so so I think it's that they're they're biased towards choosing one whose name they recognize. But I I don't know how to even validate that assertion. Uh, even given that, I think it is perfectly reasonable for us to declare that we want to reduce the number of containers that we support because they are a liability in the sense that we need to support them. We need to keep maintaining them. Um, when you choose just Jenkins at the name of the... Yeah, sorry, I, I go ahead. Um, the default tag that we use is latest, maybe, or GDK 11 or GDK 17. I think it's Debian. And I'm surprised that uh, it's evenly distributed 10% or so per tag. Because um, when people, if people uh, were to make um, a, ch a choice, which is not a choice, you know, the default choice, everybody would be using Debian or latest or GDK 11 or 17. And that's not the case. That so perhaps it's pretty interesting to me. That mean that the latest was the only one above, but largely above. Okay. But that's the only one that was different from the others in terms of statistics. But I did a five-minute look. Do not take my analysis to be a very okay, okay. deep analysis and this kind of thing. But yeah, the latest was the most popular one. And my question there is mainly the latest does not explain its Debian, its UBI behind. It's just latest. Yeah. So that was made that, that people are using, oh, I just want Jenkins colon latest. I don't care what is behind. I trust the project to provide me what is the best suited image of this kind of thing. It's not my task. I just want to run Jenkins. And now it's mainly there. Uh, if you specify the tag, why do you specify the tag? Is it preference? Is it because you better know the, that distribution, this kind of thing? So yeah. So perhaps to give you more color on the, uh, the situation there, at CloudBees, we are receiving a lot of customer reports that are mainly security scanners. They are running on their own Docker image that we provide. And often they are just telling us, oh, there is a lot of CVEs and this kind of thing. And what they would like for some is to be able to build their own image based on a golden image from the enterprise. Meaning that if the security team pre-approved the Debian image, the base image, or the, De the UBI image, they are building everything else on top of that image. So one of the things that we were discussing internally was to provide this kind of support. And I'm just wondering if it's something that could be also applied to the community in the sense that instead of providing multiple Docker uh, image in general, we are just providing one that is the official one with code and some instruction, I think already available in the website. If you want to build your own image based on UBI, based on CentOS, based on anything you want, you can just use that Docker file. 
but we are not providing ourselves the image. Hmm. So we've we've like used that. a technique somewhat like that actually in creating our our base images, and I found the, I found the technique rather complicated. It works now. It took us some time to adapt to that method. So the the what we're doing is in order to bring in Eclipse Temerin into certain of our container images, we do a from statement that uses a container image they provide. And, and that has to be either an Alpine container image for the Alpine side or a, a CentOS for the CentOS side, or in our case, I think we use their Ubuntu image as the base or as the, not base, as the contributor of JDK. So, so the, the technique you're describing is, is one that is used and we use it as a project as well. I'm, I found the, the, the usage of it rather complicated. And if part of me wonders, I'm not sure I'm ready to sign up the rest of Jenkins users to take that approach, considering how simple the current approach is. Uh, it's worth discussion though. Yeah. It's ready to open the uh, discussion to trigger the, the point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm on the same boat as you, Mark, um, but maybe uh, we could have an official image tagged by the security team and have some documentation that they, the other ones are not as secure as the official one that has been reviewed or provided by the um, security team, maybe? Well, well um, or, or to, to maybe to take it today, when we, in order to package Eclipse Temerin, we do it with a from, from statement in a Docker container that is after the original from statement. So there's a second from statement that we use. We could conceivably do the same thing with Jenkins for each of our containers. Therefore, what I think Vadek just proposed is add one more container. Now, now Vadek, are you sure you meant it? Add one more, con one more container. That's what I heard. Yeah. Add one more container, but that container would only contain Jenkins. It would not actually contain an operating system at all. Or if it did, we would advise people not to use its operating system, something like that. No, no. So let me rephrase a bit the, the proposal. Not the proposal. I would say the, the topic discussion trigger, but nothing mm -hmm. else. Um, so we are providing a Docker file in the project that you can customize as you want. If you want to use DBI, new BI, or this kind of thing. But we are providing only one image that is built officially by the project, and the rest are no longer provided as is. Meaning that if you want really to have the UBI one, you have to build your own image. Otherwise, you are using the latest that is Debian with that version, that support, and this kind of thing. That's just one way to reduce the support. And if someone really wants to have Ubuntu, they are able to do that. But it's not at the cost of the project, but at their own cost. With that in mind, my hypothesis is that if you have a slight preference for UBI, you will not do that building process yourself. You will accept to use the Debian version. If you have a strong requirement by your company, by your anything environmental thing and this kind of thing, you will build it yourself. That's a bit my hypothesis. So uh, I'm not an expert in that domain at all. I'm just giving you some information about what I'm seeing with other companies, enterprises that are sometimes very regulated and this kind of thing. When having a single ICVE in the image is blocking the production deployment, it's pretty interesting to look at and to see what could be done there for, for artists and engineers. Thanks. So I think. Sorry. Sorry, finish what you were saying, Vadek. I interrupted. Was that description more clear about what I uh, thought in terms of ID there? It was, thank you. And I, th I think it fits well into a, a the general discussion that's been ongoing about how do we reshape the current poorly structured, on the agent side, poorly structured build processes and consider, should we do something different? Can we use what we learned from that restructuring to then also restructure the controller processes so that they give, give the added flexibility that you were describing? I want to build it entirely myself. Um, then, then we would be 
teaching people, look, here's how, if you want to build it yourself, do it this way. Um, if you just want to take what we've got, we use the build it yourself instructions and we did it over the top of Debian for this one, or we did it over the top of UBI for this one. Yeah. And perhaps just to do a quick parallel there, if you look at the Jenkins.io slash download page, we have some official image and we have some third party provided package image and this kind of thing. So that could be a way to also let people have access to their favorite image by using this kind of way. Oh, I'm running that pipeline for the Jenkins project, but I'm not the Jenkins project, this kind of thing. Yeah, just yes. slash download to see the, the example. It's just an idea like this. I'm not saying it's what we need to do, but yeah. Right. You can see well, and, and, and Gen 2 or so on. Yeah. Mm. Certainly, there are users like Gavin Mogan, uh, Sam Gleske, me, who provide source code for our Docker containers, right? And, and our container definitions are the ones we happen to be using, and they're publicly visible. So, so good, good insight that we maybe we want to introduce the concept of official support and references to unofficial. And then if you want to register as an unofficial, here's a place to do it. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so maybe so we discuss guess... that proposal further. Yeah, totally. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Uh, just, uh, a quick note, uh, quick note there. Uh, if I'm there to explain a bit what I have in mind and this kind of thing, it's because behind, if there is a CVE, something that is impacting, it's us, mainly the security team, having to work on this kind of topic pretty heavily in urgency and this kind of thing. If we have something that is easier to manage, it's a better pleasure to work on this kind of thing, I would say. It's really about that aspect that is perhaps a bit selfish there in thinking about myself and my team, my team and myself in, a, in that way. Better. So yeah, it's just this kind of thing that uh, I'm trying to push a bit. In it. Yes, uh, thinking about the word emergency, uh, is there anything that we could do to automate something so that it doesn't have to be an emergency? Should we provide something to make some tests for CVEs ahead of time so that you don't have to rush uh, to do something? Well, but I, I so I would I would counter. I'm I'm going to ask a frame a different question. Go ahead. I think I think that the best thing we can do is provide easy, lightweight, simple, rapid build processes because mm -hmm. the CVEs themselves, I've considered them wildly unpredictable, which, which area will get a CVE and which won't. Uh, Git was the most recent, but it could be curl, it could be the C library, it could be all sorts of things. And, and for me, that's so wide, but rapid effective build processes um, make it easier for security and easier for the rest of us. Sorry, yes, now Vadak, you get to answer. Also there is another uh, dimension to that. I'm following very uh, strictly what Red Hat is providing for UBI because we are providing that official image at CloudBees. And due to that, I'm following not every advisory they are doing, but a lot of them. It's between one and 10 per day in terms of CV. So we have a lot of CV nowadays in every image that you can see in our Docker for sure. Are they really impacting the product, the application that is running on top of them? Most of them, no. So that's why we have 99% of, of the yeah. CVE are not impacting. If you have an issue with GCC, yeah, fine. Are you compiling anything in your image? No. Okay, so you are not impacted. It's not that easy, but that's a bit the idea behind. Sometimes we have, I will say, uh, some key library that we are looking at. For example, OpenSSH that is usually an impacting one most of the time because we rely on that indirectly through the GDK and other things. Typically curl, it could be, depending on the script that we are using and this kind of thing, most of the time it's not. But it's all this kind of assessment that is first important to do at some point, not necessarily for every library, but it's part of the job that we are doing. And it's also in terms of correction. We have perhaps seen that with the Git vulnerability as a very good example. I think Red Hat was perhaps the last one to provide a fix. 
compared to others that were providing very quickly the update. I don't remember, Mark, you provided the information like Alpine provided the fix very quickly or Debian, one of the two only. The, only, the other one was waiting for perhaps multiple days. It means that if we are assessed one CVE, the impact is, I will say assessed and we are impacted, we have to wait for these providers to provide us the correction. If we are supporting 10 different providers, one of them will provide perhaps no correction at all. Example, CentOS. So in this case, do we wait for the all the image to be covered, corrected, or do we just publish an advisory with, oh, Debian is corrected, Red Hat is corrected, but for the rest, uh, we advise you to migrate to one that is corrected, which is not really sustainable as well. So it's also why I'm trying to, uh, to push a bit with uh, the less, the, the smaller amount of uh, image in total. So it's all the hidden part of security with CV and this kind of thing that is uh, not really a paradise, I will say. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, I get your point. But uh, from the user end user point of view, um, you know, a few months ago, we tried to remove curl, for example, and users were mad at us because they couldn't use curl anymore. We told them, eh, that's not a problem. Go ahead and build your own image. And they, no. No, I won't. Uh, that's not possible. And removing all the images and just letting one, uh, I think they won't be <laughs> they won't be fine with that. But we'll see. We have to discuss that. I totally got your point about the security. It totally makes sense to me. I do understand that the, uh, the level of pressure you have uh, correcting all those images and waiting for the official provider to give the right correction and so on. I got it. That makes sense. But uh, we'll have to find a compromise, I guess. We'll see. Okay, so no, no disagreement on let's let's get rid of the Windows controller. No disagreement on let's get rid of the Blue Ocean container image, right? That those two are are long-standing action items for us. Um, I do think, and and we want to restructure the the agents so that they are sanely buildable instead of the current very complicated thing that Damien just just does not enjoy at all. And if Damien, the one <laughs> yeah. who's building it, does not enjoy it, I can imagine the security team's experience is terrible. So so un understood. Also, perhaps uh, related Mark. to that, uh, something that is uh, more and more often seen in the corporate environment is that the companies want to have their own image built in in their own pipeline. In the sense, they have some license for some security scan, and they want to build that directly inside the pipeline. Instead of relying on a Docker image provided by someone else, they are scanning afterwards. So it's also part of the shift left approach in terms of security for Docker. So building your own stuff, it's also, a, I don't want to say a new trend there, but it's growing slowly, I will say, already. So are you okay if I ask a question on that one, Vadek? Because your experience may help me there understand. So is that pattern that they are saying they go back to base operating system that they've chosen and they install exactly the packages they need? They may model it after our Docker file that we use to construct the 2.375.3 JDK 17 image but they do exactly all the steps themselves. They don't rely on any from, from the project that they're doing. Rather, they, they download the war file and use it. I would say their... answer, yes, no, yes, no, it depends. So the idea is that depending on the context, some customer, user, corporate, or installer in general are just redoing everything from scratch because they do not trust anything. Others are just building the stuff like us, but in their own pipeline, so that they can trust the scanner, their scanner, ideally. So it really depends on the level of trust they want to have on third party. If they do not trust what we are building on Jenkins.io, they can rebuild everything from scratch, the war, the HPI, all this kind of thing. I'm not sure it's a good approach because it's an open source project, but for the Docker image, it could be perhaps easier for them to do that. 
It's also a matter of building everything you want yourself in the Docker image, removing some of the stuff, reducing the size of the image to reduce the surface of attack. There was also some um, a regulated environment where they want to put additional things inside the image, typically some note, some text file. That's stupid as that. Just some text file saying that's the property of that company. That is a requirement by that company to have this kind of thing on the cloud and this kind of thing. I hope it's just in the case some security hacker that are white hats are coming there, discover the things. Oh, it's belong to that company. So I can reach out to them instead of just thinking it's a regular instance of Jenkins without any other information. So there was a lot of things they are doing in addition to what we are building. So um, yeah, I cannot tell you it's only one thing, like they are rebuilding everything from scratch. It's really depend of the, I will say the regulated level of their environment in general. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So the the scenarios you described, I believe all or almost all of them are already attainable today because I can do that already today. But what I heard, I think, is that it it varies from one entity to another, whether or not they they rebuild the thing entirely themselves or at what level do they rely on it? If they say, I want everything verified, they may rebuild from base principles, right? From, from source code. Okay, thanks. I think it's also depend of the size of the team or company that is using the, the Docker image at the end. If you're alone working on your Jenkins, I think you do not care to rebuild everything from scratch. If you have a team of 10, 20 person, I don't think it's still valuable. But then if you have hundreds of developers using the image, Perhaps you prefer to have your own version. I don't know. Thank you. Okay. That covered the topics I had. Vladek, uh, Bruno, any others that we need to discuss? <laughs> so um, one comment on what you mentioned, people were very upset about the removal of yep. rural do we know their use cases uh yeah they were they were they described them in their complaints and they were mm -hmm. use cases that were in their case to their mind valid they didn't they didn't want to rebuild the the image themselves they wanted the image to have that fundamental tool that it had before so for them it was a loss of functionality right so where i'm going is um currently we're collecting telemetry about distributed builds configurations mm -hmm. and around uh so spoiler alert um around three quarters of instances neither have agents nor clouds configured so what i expect is happening here is people use the simplest most setup and expect the basic os tools to be installed to support their builds when what they really should be doing is set up distributed builds and they just don't bother um and for me that if you're in that situation you should configure jenkins differently jenkins tells you to do it differently um, it is not unlike many years ago when uh, we attempted to limit the uh, permissions for the Jenkins home directory to the Jenkins user itself, basically uh, 700 in uh, change mode uh, numbers, octets. Um, and use cases were described where they said, well, I have a build running on the controller and I just copy artifacts in a shell build step directly from the Jenkins home directory. And at the time, I, I don't think I was a core maintainer yet, and I sort of uh, accepted that. But today, I would just tell them to do it differently, because that's not how it's supposed to work. And so uh, perhaps uh, a better understanding of people's use cases would be useful here for us to identify 
whether we as a project even would recognize them as valid or whether we should offer alternatives like setting up distributed builds and pointing out to people if they do anything non-trivial uh building on the controller is a really really bad idea good good point well taken and just in case curl definitely should remain on the agent image yes yes no, okay. no question and, and we left it on the agent image absolutely it was all it was still on the agent image yeah that that was uh, no question there yeah that's like okay my passion git and git lfs should be on the controller and on the agent it belongs in both places we need it uh, it's just too central to our operations to not have it yeah So perhaps just okay, uh, I think... apologize about the topic, uh, the surprise topic at the end. We double the size, the length of the meeting due to us. So uh, sorry for the intrusion. No, that's okay. Um, we have a proposed agenda, but uh, more topic or surprise topic are welcome. I think. Uh, yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank you. And I think that's a wrap up. Yeah. Thanks a lot all for coming. The recording should be available from twenty four to forty eight eight hours yeah difficult to say and see you in two weeks from now have a good rest of the day bye thank you bye